Well, here I am back again at Old Bond Community School, but I'm here for a reason this morning. I've got two very good friends with me that I want to introduce to you. Hi, I'm John. Hello, and I'm Brian. Now, yes, these two man. guys are here for a reason. John is the man who started the Stepping Stone Forest for Schools project. And Brian is here to find out all about it. So we're going to move up to the forest here in Obon Community School, which was the first of the Stepping Stone Forest projects for schools. So let's go up and have a look. Hello. I'm Brian Murray and I'm here in the Old Bone Community School today because I want to find out all about what is a stepping stone forest. It sounds fascinating to me and the man who created it all here, John Kybert, is going to be telling us later on. I'm excited and I think that you will be too. Stepping stone forests are small, densely planted woodlands of native Irish trees and shrubs. The method of planting these small forests is inspired by the world-renowned botanist Professor Akira Mayawaki. The soil preparation and dense planting ensures that these forests grow and develop extremely quickly. <clears throat> so, before we go any further, let's bring John Kybert into the picture and we'll ask him a few questions. John, how did this, where did this come from, this idea? Well, it, the idea is inspired by a Japanese botanist called Akira Mayawaki. Uh, we're inspired by his ideas rather than following him slavishly because some of the things that he does we don't need to do in Ireland because our soil conditions are just different. Yeah. Different, exactly. Yeah, we don't, we don't slavishly follow his ideas because we don't need to go through some of the processes, the soil preparation that, that, he, needs to, that he needed to do in, in some of the areas that he was planting in, say, in Japan or India. Um, so Irish soil conditions are much better, so we don't need to do the, the uh, uh, testing and um, enhancement as such. Stepping stone forests are, are small native, uh, small forests of native Irish trees. As you can see from behind us that the, the trees are planted quite densely, three per square meter, roughly, um, and this will encourage them to grow really, really quickly um, because they're only competing with themselves. On the soils, on the surface of the soil, we've, we've excluded any weeds by putting down a layer of cardboard and newspaper and, and wood chip mulch. So basically, the trees are just competing with themselves. So they just drive each other on. And in in, in six months' time, this will be quite a significant uh, patch of, of forest. And um, as you can see, we're creating them in a in a horseshoe shape, which creates this outdoor classroom for the kids when they you know, when the forest does develop, to be able to come out and learn in, in a natural environment. Imagine being a child, uh, seeing this happening, and then you, ha you live your life and you come to the age of 65 or 70, and you come back with your children, or your grandchildren probably yeah. by then, and you say, see those trees, I helped to plant yeah, those. I, Imagine I, having that to say. It's a brilliant idea though, viewers. I have to say, it gives me little goosebumps. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where did, A, the idea come from, and why are they called stepping stones? Well, the idea came about because I was bored during lockdown and I was just doing some research on the internet and I came across uh, Kira Miyawaki's methods and I saw that they were being replicated in other parts of Europe, uh, particularly in, in Holland, where they, the, the National Lottery has funded them to the tune of 1.8 million to promote these tiny forests. And they've trademarked the name and everything. So I said, look, this, this has to be possible to do it in Ireland. And lo and behold, I found that Antashka had a branch called Leaf Ireland, and uh, they were doing similar, similar kind of uh, forests in schools. And I said, this is just fantastic. And they were really helpful in terms of, of giving me information. They were very generous with their time and the information. I went to visit a couple of forests down in Limerick, and I said, OK, I'm, I'm doing this if I can at all. And I just started working on the concept. Um, and. I was trying to encourage the local council to get involved and in their uh, biodiversity plan they talk about stepping stones of, of uh, oases of biodiversity throughout the county. I said okay well have a stepping stone for us and um, so I, I stole from that. I basically steal from everybody as I'm going. I'll create a swiping rather. Talent borrows genius robs. <laughs> That's what I was told. Nobody's ever called me a genius before but there you go. So I was here for the planting of stepping stones, the first of its kind, and, and now I'm back and I can see it's it's all happening. That's very exciting. Yeah. Two months later. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Now here's this may seem seem to be a silly a silly question. These are baby trees growing up. Are they all the same tree? 
Or is there a variety of no, that's, trees? That's really interesting. Yeah, that's one thing that I didn't mention earlier on. We're going for the widest possible uh, spread of species. They're all native, so you're quite limited that's in what you fantastic. can do. That's fantastic. So there's great. 22 different species in here. So that should really help with the biodiversity of this forest. Oh, that's just fantastic. Uh, now, it's, I'm, I'm not a tree expert, so don't ask me to identify some of them, but I, certainly you can see a holly there. Um, there's a yew over there that we don't use in, in primary schools because it can be poisonous. Um, and we have arbutus, which are strawberry trees. Oh my. And these, these guys over here, Scots pine, so despite the name, oh my. they're native Irish. Really? Because the old Latin name for Ireland was yeah. actually Scots. Oh my. Oh my. And, and, and they, they grow to be enormous. So we've, we've got silver birch, we've got oak, we've got alder, elder. So we come back in 50 years and we'll see them all growing up there, not us. Yeah, I may not make it back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, and, and there's, you know, the, as you said, the, the, the wide variety. And what we ask people to do is just come take a tree and plant it. And then don't plant the sa same one close to it, just go to another part of the thing. Oh, it's, it's kind of randomized. What Miyawaki did with was he used to let kids so come and take a tree, just do it, and that replicated nature as best he could. That's a great idea, though. Yeah, absolutely. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to let nature do its thing. So what we do is we, we give it a, a, a good start to life with the, with yeah. the mulching, as you can see, and we plant the trees very densely, and then you just walk away and pretty much leave it. And then you know. 60 years later you go with your grandchild and the trees are all grown up and you say I planted one of those trees. Absolutely. There's history starting. Yeah, yeah. And there's somebody getting involved in it through their granddad or whatever. Do you know I'm just I'm just very excited about it. It's terrific. Okay. Yes, the so so you're looking for a randomness that kind of approximates to what nature would do. So you don't plant them rigidly in straight lines or in patterns or putting all the one species together. We just mix them all up. Um, and the, the, I mentioned that we went to Limerick with the people from uh, Leaf Ireland mm -hmm. and we saw forests that were, had been planted 20 months earlier and these were enormous. I mean, these trees were 15 feet tall. They were really lush and green. They were n n just small forests, simple as that. So in a couple of years time, these would be quite right. mature looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of the children would be saying, as I said, to the grandchildren, I have planted the forest. Absolutely. And it goes right down, it gives people other ideas, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. it's well, very exciting. What we're doing is um, uh, we're going to come in and do ponds as well, not in the forest area but adjacent to it because one habitat supports another. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we'll, we, where schools are happy enough to take them, we're going to do, um, we're working with a, a chap called Collie Ennis to put in these, these small ponds to support uh, uh, frogs, no, toads, toads. Gosh, it's got better and better. That's one of bringing the animal world into it as well. That's yep, fantastic. Absolutely. Oh, well, and they, the birdies would be here taking For they'd sure. Be, they'd be building in the nest yeah. here. Yeah, this absolutely. is going to be a block of flats, folks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, Brian, th th that point that you're making about kids having kind of a sense of ownership in 60 years time or whatever, yeah. um, in one of the primary schools, all the kids wrote their own name on the piece of paper that's gonna last, it's kind of plastic, and they put it on uh, each tree that they planted. So they all have their own individual My tree. My tree, yeah, that's fantastic. And it can go down to generations yeah, and generations. for sure. It's a fantastic idea. Yeah. Well done, just so good. Well, yeah. I'm just delighted to be here and I'm so pleased that you were able to take me and see all of this. I really, really appreciate it. And I look forward to coming back to it again as it's getting bigger and bigger and, yeah. and see the development all happening. Yeah, well, I mean, this was, this was the very first. We're going to do, we did seven last year. We're going to do 15 this year. But what we're trying to do is actually encourage schools to become self-starters because it's not rock science what, what we do here. So we'll give them a template and say, this is your ABC guide and you go and do it yourselves. Um, and hopefully we'll have a forest of little forests. <laughs> That's fantastic. It just gets better and better. It's just a wonderful idea and I wish you the very best. And Thank I look you forward much. to seeing it grow. And I appreciate your interest. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching Wildlife Wednesday folks. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, I'd be grateful if you'd give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And when you do, don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified every time I upload new content. If you'd like to buy a copy of my safari book from sunrise to sunset, follow the link below the video. In the meantime, take care, stay safe, 
we're not quite out of the woods with COVID yet, but we're almost there. So take all the precautions that you can. Till next week, take care. Stay safe. Bye.